Wrath of Man is a story of revenge based around the cash truck business in Los Angeles. And Jason Statham plays H, who is on a tear of vengeance to find the killers of his innocent son, who was by accident caught up in a robbery. He was a witness at a violent cash truck robbery. Unbeknownst to the robbers that Jason Statham is a crime lord himself, so he's very qualified to find the culprits involved in this heinous and unfortunate accident. There are few subjects as sensitive as the unpalatable concept of a child dying before the parent. It's even worse when a child is murdered, when an innocent child is murdered. But when the father happens to be a killer himself, it inspires all sorts of empathetic vengeance that anyone can relate to. N not necessarily for the right reasons, but one can't help but feel very emotionally charged about that particular theme. So we deal with the themes of vengeance, visceral vengeance, understandable, empathetic vengeance, which is unpalatable in any capacity. However, you can empathize and sympathize for the reasons why one would be so emotionally charged. Theft, greed, wrath, sons, fathers, blood, thicker than water. Ultimately, greed being the genesis of destruction and almost anticlimactically the fulcrum upon which such biblical vengeance is exercised in order to satiate the loss of one's kin. This film is more, uh, more violent, uh, more gritty and arguably more realistic than any of my other films have previously been. I've always been very keen on, on Jason Statham as an actor. In fact, I was the first person to use Jason Statham as an actor. I think the first thing I used him was in Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. We opened the film on Jason. I always thought, thought, I always thought that Jason Statham should be a movie star. I'm very happy to see that he has become one. And uh, it, f it feels like we should be reunited. And I felt as though we should do something that wasn't funny for a change. I thought this would be the perfect story for Jason and I to be reunited on. Um, it's not funny, this film. It's serious and the theme is serious and it's very violent and very aggressive. But I thought it'd be the perfect film uh, for, the perfect role for Jason to occupy. When it came to getting Jason to be in this film, it was as simple as calling him up and giving him a two minute pitch on what that film was. Uh, neither, of the, neither of us overthunk it at the time. We liked the premise. He, the, the premise of the movie could be summarized in a sentence. Jason, I always felt, was perfect for this particular film. And I'm a big fan of his. Um, and he's gone on and be become incredibly successful. And I feel as though this, was, uh, this film is really a question of selling apples and you're actually buying apples. So it does what it says on the tin, this film which is Jason Statham in Revenge, in an intelligent, uh, intelligent genre movie, which, which its spine of motivation is that of revenge, intelligent revenge, and understandable revenge. Yeah, Jason and I have been mates for about 22 years, and I think we're probably closer now than we were 22 years ago, and I was pretty close with him 22 years ago. He's been on his journey, uh, I've been on mine, uh, he's moved back to, like, we both lived in Los Angeles for, I lived there for seven years, he lived there for ten. 
um, and we've both found ourselves back in London. Um, I see more of him now than I have done for 15 years or so, um, which is great. Yeah, and he's one of my best mates. There's much I respect and like about Jason Statham. There's, uh, yeah, I see more of Jason now than I have done uh, for 15 years. We're closer now than we than we were 22 years ago, I think. We're on to make another movie shortly. Um, I think, by the way, I don't. He, he doesn't look like his age today, which is the other strange thing. Um, I don't know what he's up to. But, uh, yeah, he's still in great physical nick. He has a happy life, a happy f uh, family life. Um, there's a lot that Jason's managed to juggle in his life uh, very skillfully, with great wisdom. Jason has wisdom, funny enough. Um, as, uh, but I really, I really respect him as both a, as an actor and a human being. Jason and I, I think we've had the same relationship for 22 years, uh, uh, known each other, um, and I find it mutually respectful. Always has been. Obviously, I'm the best chess player, and I can do more press ups than Jason, which he finds embarrassing, as he should. I, I did, now, I, I, on chess, he, he obviously loses, and it has done for years. <laughs> there is photographic evidence to uh, support me on that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, over the last 22 years, there's a couple of games he's won. They're usually charity to keep him inspired and not lose the will to live on set. Um, now, his chess actually is quite intuitive and, uh, as you can imagine, aggressive. So, no, but he doesn't really stand a chance on the chessboard. Where, where he does stand a chance is in, in the pool. Right, he can swim rather well, Jason. He can stay underwater for quite a long time. Press-ups he's all right on. Um, yeah, but I don't like competing with him under, under the water. I, it, Jason I've been competing with physically and intellectually for 22 years, and where I, where I can't get into trouble is is underwater with Jason. But the other thing is is that he's uh, talk about positive competition. I've never really minded, and I don't really want him to know this because I pretend that I do mind. But I've never really minded losing to him in the two occasions out of the several thousand that we've competed with. That uh, the couple of times where he has won, it's not really bothered me that much. There's no competition when it comes to cooking or grilling. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's an amateur when it comes to grilling. Uh, we've got a great ensemble cast. We've got Josh Hartnett, Scott Eastwood, Annie Garcia, Robert Delaney, Eddie Marzan, Holt McCallany, Jeffrey Donovan, uh, Neve Algar. I really enjoyed working with all of these guys. Um, and they're all very respectful and all very professional. I could tell you about Post Malone in the sense that he's the loveliest man I've ever met that you can imagine. Uh, he has fantastic manners, certainly. Uh, he's incredibly polite, uh, very professional, uh, turns up on time, uh, is prepared to work overtime, doesn't complain, is, uh, as it transpires, very talented in many ways, and honestly was a breath of enthusiastic fresh air uh, to everyone on the set. And when Posty left, um, everyone was awed by the generosity of his spirit. I, know, I, know, I think some actors find my process at the beginning a bit unnerving. I, the only reason I'm, I know that is because I'm told that afterward. Um, but, you know, what we, what we try to do is create a roadmap um, uh, which is not too definitive, uh, although initially it's definitive, and then from that, I can I try with the actors on the day to improve the dialogue or the plot on the day as much as we can, and in my experience that usually improves by at least 50%. But what it can do is it can trip up an actor if they've got a significant amount of dialogue to learn. But I'm afraid once you're in situated in the situation, uh, that situation will inform uh, some form of evolution improvement on the script and 
that makes it more challenging on the actor because the actor has to start to learn those lines quickly, uh, keeps them on their toes, but it can be unnerving. I think there are so many components within a film that you can afford to be creative and I think that credit sequences are worth spending time on and are worth being investing some uh, creative whatever. Um, yeah I mean there are so many different ways in which you can be creative in a film and I just think uh, credit sequences uh, are, is just another opportunity into which to uh, exercise your creativity. So I think we've got quite a quite good credit sequence within this equation. And, and what we try to do is, that, uh, rather than putting a needle, a needle drop or a familiar song over the credit sequence, because it seemed to take us out of the movie, although there's a logical fit to putting a source track, uh, uh, to putting a needle drop on over the credit sequence, we decided to go for score on the credit sequence, which um, sets the tone for the rest of the film, or, although it's not a traditional needle drop, uh, I felt as though it, it was honest to the theme of the film. The, the credit sequence was modelled on the fact that we call Wrath of Man, which is a biblical quote, um, and the, the demonic and angelic imagery and symbolism uh, that comes from a biblical theme. Uh, I felt as though it, it, the, the credit sequence could have just been about uh, the symbolism of biblical iconography and symbolism, but we sort of mix that up with imagery from the film as well. Hi there. Did you know that according to reports, during some of the Russian roulette scenes in the movie The Deer Hunter, Robert De Niro suggested putting a live round into the gun to heighten the actor's tension. Ultimately, the situation was safe, but it still enhanced the drama. Make sure to click below to subscribe on the side for more great content, and you can get my t-shirt at the link right below this video.